Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. I'm Mike Graham. Welcome back to me. They said I wasn't going to be here, and here I am. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I have returned to the scene of the crime, uh, but there hasn't been any crime, but there is about to be one of the great shows of all time because uh, I've got a fantastic panel, uh, and they're all right here with me. Candice Holder is here, Peter Blexi is here, Esther Craker is here, and even Jeremy Kyle has found some time to come on. And for you, my old son, Plank always. Thank you very much indeed. And here's what we're going to be fighting for, of course. You'll have heard that sound before. Uh, so, listen, it's great to be back. Uh, because there's been an awful lot of plankery going on while I've been away. And I think we'd better get straight to it. Candice, uh, let's kick straight off with the BBC, yes. those charlatans. Ooh, yeah, so this is BBC Arabic. It's a very serious one to start off with, but I think it's really relevant to yes. everything that's been going on this week. So The Telegraph reported that BBC Arabic had to remove a programme that had been broadcast on the BBC where they basically questioned if some of the massacres in Israel had even happened. Yes. So repeating conspiracy theories on the internet that the whole thing was just a fake. Obviously, they deleted it immediately, right. got on top of it. But this also comes amidst report, amidst, after reports that BBC Arabic reporters have been issuing very partial statements mm. on their Twitter feed. Yeah. And there needs to be a lot more scrutiny because they are a very trusted because source in speaking, that region. And they were speaking specifically about the, the, the attack by Hamas, weren't they? They were speaking yes. specifically about the fact that it was a glorious day and all this kind of nonsense. And that was the kind of language they were using. And this comes on the top, of course, of John Simpson, uh, who still is the only man in Britain convinced that, you know, uh, they're doing the right thing by not calling uh, these horrible, ghastly murderers and killers, uh, actual terrorists. And they say and that... Not, and the government have said there's no reason why, under Ofcom rules, that they can't. And they say the reason for that is because they don't want to be seen to be taking sides. But then obviously... But they are this, taking sides. Yes, if this division uh, of the BBC is doing this, then that is seriously undermining yeah, what they're saying. Absolutely. Of all the things we talked about on Breakfast this week, this is the thing that infuriates people. Talk about not listening to the room, right? Yeah. The king, the next king... And to his credit, Keir Starmer, as quick as Rishi Sunak. Everybody is condemned. We were there when we were breaking that news. Mm. This was horrific. Yeah. Women were raped. People were filmed being murdered. Babies' bodies were burned. These are terrorists. The BBC, it's another example, isn't it, of sitting on the fence. They've got... I, I don't understand how they don't feel like they should if you like, mirror what the rest of the world mm. is saying, the right? Is, they're, they're, we pay their wages. I what know. is wrong with their, them? Their guidelines are clearly out of date, but they wouldn't even call the, the, the terrorists, they wouldn't even call them murderers, yeah. right? They, oh. they insisted on calling them gunmen and militants, which doesn't even make sense, because right. you can actually call them murderers and no yeah. one would question your impartiality. And then what happened, yeah. and then what happened two so. days later with the thing happened in Brussels? Yeah. They put out immediately a terrorist yeah. gunman and deleted it within two minutes. It's, right. You talk about not taking sides, Candice. I think Mike's right. They do take sides. They take the sides of completely not having an opinion mm. and people are fed up with the... It's supposed well, to be they do our that national broadcast. But in the case of these people at BBC Arabic, who have now been suspended in many cases, you know, they were actually actively taking mm. sides. They were taking the side of Hamas, yep. which yeah. is extraordinary. And when repeating... Militant, militant gunmen were the armed police officers who laid down their weapons a couple yeah. of weeks ago. That's militant gun completely right. agree. Not Hamas. Right. They are terrorists. Yeah, exactly right. It but, seems incredible that people would even ask the question. Yes, and I mean, I think as a journalist, the principle you uphold most is accuracy, yeah. which means you don't have to be rigid in the way that you use but language. You, know you can use language according to what you see, what you you trust your own judgment. Don't you think they're so terrified of everything at the BBC because there are so many rules? But they're not and terrified of everything, are they? Because they'd be quite happy to, to slag off Donald Trump. Yep. More than happy to slag off people uh, celebrating Brexit and saying how terribly white the organisation was that was held this party in the square. You know, they're perfectly happy to take sides which suits them. They just don't want to take the side that they think is politically incorrect. But do you think? is the quality of journalism that's suffering because I think from this whole conflict over the last week I find it really difficult to actually ascertain what's real information and what's misinformation yeah. on, online so I'm not saying that I don't have any sympathy for them but clearly you should have some sort of standards oh definitely right? because that's that's clearly what's lacking here and I we have to have an responsibility hold on a second it doesn't mean to be rude this isn't online this is the BBC this oh, is yeah. why people are so angry that a state national whatever you call it broadcaster is incapable it seems in their quest to be in impartial they're neither one nor other yeah. and they actually are then open to criticism there isn't a pete's right there isn't a sane human being who, whether you're whatever your side of the argument and i've come out i've got jewish friends have been very strong about this you cannot say that three thousand people in paragliders crossing an international border and murdering babies are anything other than terrorists yeah. and i'll tell you what it will do the bbc it will be another example of the great british public are fed up be it bbc arabic or whatever 
The, this will do another thing about the licence because people are fed up. They, are. they want honesty and Absolutely. they want integrity, not Absolutely. nim mamby. What was that word? Nimby, pimby, nam. I don't even know. Nambi, what the word pamby is. will do. Sitting on the fence. Exactly. There's no more uh, time in uh, a lot of people's houses now for, for the BBC. They just don't. They don't rely on it anymore. They don't watch it anymore. They don't trust it. Simple as that. Um, let's move on, though. Peter, you've got some uh, pronouns for us. Thanks, love. Ah, no oh. problem. No oh, problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> Under Labour Party proposals, yeah. just I've just crime. got myself two years in prison. Yeah. Can you believe it, Petal? Oh, right, no, that's sweetheart. four years. <laughs> yeah, they've actually put forward that if they get into power, they will give you two years if you misgender someone. In a prison? Two years. Yes, two, two years in two prison. Years, Is there space huh? in our prisons? Yes, mate. Oh, no, it's six years no, I'm up to hang now. Hang on. But which sort of prison will you go into? Because, obviously, if you're um, pretending you're a woman while you're impersonating somebody who's hateful, uh, they won't know which prison to Come on, in. darling, don't start Shut that. up, you. That's the thing. You know, <laughs> Hate we, crime. You know, you know, everybody's going to get... We're going to get the Black Mariah around. Everybody's going to be rounded up in the back of it. Who's going to do all this arresting, by the way? Because, as you know, Peter, there aren't any police out there, are there? It's a very good point, because we'll have to have misgender in prisons and we'll have to have trans gender prisons, won't we? To make sure that people don't get mixed up and put in the wrong in the wrong shovel. Yeah. Geez, so many feminists will do that and they will not care. They will go to jail. They will do it for their principles. You're right, mate. Just oh, no, eight oh, years. Yeah. One TV show and I've got eight darling. years. Is, is, what about darling? Is that allowed or not? Is that is that out as well? Darling. Thank you very much. All right, I'm, darling. I'm, I'm touched. What about the other one? Dead naming's a good one. I don't know what they mean by that, but apparently it's yeah. when you call what? somebody by a name that they have now given up. Yes. Right? So, for example, if my previous name had been Shirley uh, and you'd have gone, Shirley, <laughs> some mistake, and I said, no, you can't call me that anymore, um, that's dead naming me <laughs> because know. my name... I don't understand... What's it. dead I, naming? I did that's that, that once. They call it. I didn't mean to. I just went thanks to the person's old name and they said, don't dead name me, like I'd done something Sorry, really what, like, terrible. What, like if a woman gets married, which hopefully will happen one day? What, one day so for if us, I said, yeah. Come Esther Craycoo, nay, what's it? Oh, God, I've upset her. <laughs> this is absolute tosh, man, isn't it? Isn't Why are you it? looking at me like that? Very smooth, Jeremy. I like that. It's, come on, it's also, going well. What does it mean as well if you if you do get married and then you become double-barrelled? What happens then? I ate that, by the yeah. way. I, I don't think I'm going to keep my name and take my... Uh, as, or, have any of your... I don't expect asking. you, of all people, to criticise me I've for my marriage. I've only been married, right? married once. Listen, three times. But, uh, and she took my name, you know, and then she ground it into the dust and then <laughs> still jumps all over it. <laughs> over the there is an argument, there is uh, an argument that says, you know, that... that, that Women keep a man's name even after they're divorced. Some do. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, because not I think it yeah. makes yeah. them worth more money, perhaps. I, I, all I can say is, I mean, honestly, on a serious note, if if, if that is a proposal... And, and, I mean, let's just remember that apparently if you shoplift now, it's not a crime. That's not there's a crime, no police. No. But if you say, all right, sweetheart, all right, babe, how you doing, darling? All right, yeah. mate? Then I'm going to jail for then eight years. For <laughs> I'll tell you what I've got for you. I've got a very well-researched <laughs> uh, documentary part here, uh, which is where the American police deal with pronouns. This is what they do. What seems to be the problem, officer? You've been driving in the carpool lane for the past three miles. Alone. <laughs> Alone? <laughs> well, you should know that my pronouns are they, them. So we can drive in the carpool lane. Yeah, I got a driver out here in the carpool lane says the pronouns are they. Excuse me. Her? I mean, this is ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> go, you know, I mean, we all know the world's gone mad, but when did it go this mad? You, you can't even you don't know what you're supposed to call people. Yeah. I don't call anyone they, do you? No, no, it's totally Even if confusing. they ask me, I'm like, I'm not calling you they. You've not it's seen not that it. joke where that bloke no. says he invited somebody around for dinner and, and, and are you going to come? He said, she said, I'm called they. And he said, they come. He said, loads of food and she turned up on her own. He's already <laughs> act off. It's the, what, honestly, it really? Is. It is. Do you know what? I've got eight years in this show. Yeah. I'm beyond caring. I'm going to do double figures. Thanks for having me, Treacle. I'll see you when I'm out. All right, sweetheart. Um, let's get on to you, uh, the soon-to-be Mrs. Kraku. Uh, oh, oh um, gosh. Uh, what, what would be your married name? I'm not answering that. No. Anyway, you don't have to uh, give away any personal details. Yeah, exactly. You can tell me later. There's a spring in your step um, and your hat's yeah. in a jaunty animal. OK, so my, my plank this week is Netflix. Netflix. Because ne Yes, because they're coming out with a new season of The Crown and apparently Princess Dan is going to become a ghost. <laughs> now, I don't have an issue with... <laughs> Very smooth. 
I don't have an issue with that's that. Or even though it's going to sort of drive home the fact that the crown is fictional, so people yeah. need to stop getting so attached. But it's her line. But not in for the this Americans. Movie. The Americans believe every word. Oh yeah, but that's their own fault. They yeah. don't. They don't allow crazy things. Anyway, but she in her being a girl, she's telling King Charles how handsome he is and how much she misses him and how dear he is. And I was like, you do realize what? at the time that she died, they were divorced yes. and they went to a very acrimonious divorce. She was with someone else. Don't you think she might be telling the person she was with that he was handsome yeah. instead of her ex-husband? Right. Yeah, so does, does Dodie appear as a ghost as well? No, just her. Does it, oh. does it not absolutely, and on a serious note, then completely trash anything to do with the crown now? Mm. That's oh, like of course, Dallas yeah. when yeah. Bobby came out of the show. You're yeah. not going to believe anything ever more, are you? That's I mean, they might as well have CGI. <laughs> like, they right. have you know, does, she appear as, uh, does she appear as young Diana or as old Diana? No, she what? appears as Diana when she passes, so 36-year-old okay. Diana. Right. Uh, and it's just... The, the thing is, she's so far removed from what people would actually expect of her, like her just kind of complimenting. So she's Charles. a ghost. She comes. She, as a, she comes as a ghost. That's suddenly she doing back pottery with Camilla's hands. Around <laughs> yeah, you know things. It's, I can see that. I can see. I can do. Actually, I think we All have. Right. A, we have got a clip. Can we, can we have a look at it? See what it looks like. You barely find it in yourselves to hug your own. I hug who I want to. I hug who I love. Particularly when they are affected by the selfishness of others and need cheering up. Who are you referring to? Camilla. Why would I care about her? Because I care about her! Morning, noon, and night, I care about her! This does completely take away any kind of credibility. Oh, yeah. I never when, thought when, it had any anyway. When it, but when it started, if I'm absolutely honest, genuinely, and when my old man was alive, he's dead, we know that, but honestly, because he? he worked for the royal family, and he liked the early stuff with right. the Queen Mother, and he liked that. Well, First that's a bit historical, of series, wasn't it? Yeah, the historical stuff, and now it's become... It's like a soap opera. It's, like it's, 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 it's rubbish yeah. now. It's yeah, awful. I mean, what are they going to do next? Andrew in Pizza Express. Yeah, I see that coming. <laughs> Sweating. See, you know, I think see I think that. Netflix hates Britain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because this is so. But insulting. I mean, they're also struggling, aren't they? Netflix. There's people are going. Do you know what? We used to watch this all the time. This Netflix garbage. But you do you know, think? Do you think Meghan and going, Harry direct it? I don't think so. I think Meghan and Harry direct the No, because some people watch Netflix. Mm. That's yeah. the difference. Oh, if they were directing it, nobody would. Yeah, I oh, mean, dear. goodness gracious me. Anyway, Jeremy, it's time for your suggestion. Uh, your your a tip for the top this week? I think we need to just take a moment, because there was a, a an interview that went out. Um, I know you've been away, right? Yes. Piers did with... Uh, Major Captain Tom Moore's daughter had a... Yes, I saw it. I consider it the best interview my old mate's ever done. Yeah. I have never in my life been more appalled about... I, I, it, I, people might share this, they might not. Your old man serves this country, wins copious medals, is ill, and during COVID and the pandemic, walks up and down this garden and becomes this national treasure and raises, listen to it, 40 million quid. Mm. The people who were struggling put their hands in the pockets because of this man. And you duplicitous, manipulative woman with your odious family, right? Take, what, 800 grand? And apparently... That's the 800 grand. They made it sound like a small yeah, amount of money. And this is what I thought was astonishing about Piers' interview, because he said he gave a chance and chance to say that 800 grand was from the profits of three books that he wrote. Yeah. And she said, and I quote, I never... He never wanted that money to go to charity. In the prologue of the first book, because they showed it, it went... I want the proceeds to go to charity. <laughs> talk about talk about desecrating somebody's yeah. legacy. What an amazing mm. man. An insult to the people who paid. And I have to say this, and it will go down like a lead balloon. As he interviewed them, there's the husband. Uh, uh, kids. If she is feeling particularly un, uh, under the weather, she can go and sit in that nice new spa that they had built. Do you not think um, it's an outrage, though? I do think it's an outrage. And I think that for them to think that they could in any way be seen as sympathetic characters because lots of people were saying mean things to them on, inter on the internet. Well, hello. You know, they've clearly... Clearly, unfortunately, for everybody who gave them money, used some of that money for their own ends. And only this week, in fact, they were in a planning committee meeting yeah. um, in the, the, the local town near Richmond, I think, in Yorkshire, where yeah. they are, basically saying, oh, but, you know, um, yes, I know we only applied to build a small swimming pool. The reason we built the whole spa was because <laughs> we wanted to help the community. So they're now so saying, shameless. oh, yeah, I mean, it's totally shameless. And, and the charity saying, oh, has... so loads of people can now come and use it. You know, disabled children. Rishi you know, Sunak, who, who lives down the road. Yeah. Anyone... Oh, no, he's got his own. No, he's got his own. I mean, you know, it's just beggar's belief, isn't it? And they've shut the charity. And on a serious note, whatever happens to them, they did that interview. I think it's an absolute disgrace in the memory of that yeah. old guy. I really... Well, really I think we've got oh. a clip. Let's, for those of you who didn't see it, here it is. So the majority of the 800,000 has come from selling trademark products. Products associated with his name, yeah. Right, yeah. because that's the whole point yeah. of the company, right? Yeah. So what's happened to that money? It has been used, you know, some of it was used to look after Tom. You've kept most of it, I guess. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, okay, pri it's so private, private income. <laughs> private income. Wow. People oh spending money on Captain and and Tom and memorabilia and imagine, is now private income. Imagine how right. difficult it was yeah. for people in this country during COVID who lost their jobs and they still gave to yeah. this charity. It's a disgrace. Because they looked at him and he was he was put up there as one of the great Britons, wasn't he? A man who, even at his age, was willing to make personal sacrifices, make physical sacrifices, to walk uh, when most people of his age can't even mm. get out of a chair. Um, and I find it incredible that, that they would feel, as you said, Jeremy, like as if we should feel sorry for them, yeah. like they've somehow been put in this awful situation. Alongside this spa very, pool... Very, very plankish. Alongside this spa pool, you see a treadmill yeah. and have a gin kit right. and all that kind of stuff, yeah, yeah. right? They're just shysters, the lot of them. And I've, <laughs> and I've, I've, He's on form. I've, yeah, never, I've never seen shysters. people with no self-awareness whatsoever. Absolutely. They, they, they just don't understand how badly they were coming across. And I, and I, said, this to Pe I said this to Piers, and yeah. please don't take this the wrong way. I can't even believe they did the interview. No. Yeah. yeah. That's how good his journalistic yeah. endeavour was in that, because there must be a part of their brains, which are obviously very small, that thought, <laughs> that we'd all sit there and go, oh, I understand that. Well, do you remember there was a moment, wasn't there, in it, where they asked them to switch the cameras off because they didn't yeah. want them to carry on with the line of questioning that he was doing? And you're kind of going, sorry, you don't mm. seem to understand this, do you? Yeah. No, mm. you're being asked questions by the people of this country yes. in the form of Piers Morgan, who's doing a very good job yeah. at basically absolutely skewering all of you. So the idea that you're going to go, oh, can we just have a little break so we can discuss uh, how this is going to go? I know you no. said like that, but there is, a, I would suspect, I don't know, a heavy chance that the police will look into that in terms of defrauding a yeah. charity, is there not? And Captain Tom, well, rest his soul. Commission. Would that not be the do? case? You're an ex-copper. Would that not? Is there not a case to answer, do you reckon? I don't if know. If somebody makes a complaint and there's evidence to be discovered, the old Bill might look at it. But dear old Captain Tom, rest his soul. Yeah. Um, they tried to paint him as though he was Winston Churchill, right? Which he wasn't. He did a great thing, raised a load of money, but up until the age of 99, it was completely unknown to the British public. Yeah. He then did a lovely thing. But they have tried to immortalise him mm. to make him some kind of saintly figure. They've definitely figure. milked it, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. and so they got 250,000... 100th birthday cards, right? 250,000. So they'll take the stamps off. They've got, them. they've got them in storage, exactly. Take yeah. the stamps off, yeah. raise money for charity, recycle the rest. That'll be tons and tons of cardboard and paper. You get money for that. Mm. Put more money into the foundation. The way they've run it, the what type of people they are, I wouldn't give them the pickings off my nose. Thank you very much indeed. I must say, yeah, Blakesley, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> what are you on today, <laughs> Blakesley? I, 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 I on too fire. wouldn't give them the pickings off my nose. Yes, thank you very much indeed. Well, listen, um, coming up, we've got much more to do, but that's a pretty good start. That might be the winner, you know, that uh, that's Ingram story. Uh, but we've got, um, we're have got we going to talk about um, women and weight. We're going to talk about Greta, who's back in town. Have a wash. Apparently she's moved here. Uh, and some more nonsense from the Metropolitan Police. This is Plank of the Week. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. What a great thing it is to be back here at Talk TV. This is my um, first appearance uh, since my absence, but thank you very much indeed for waiting. Uh, we've got loads to do, and I've got a great panel here, and one of the uh, winners may have already been named, I'd have to say, but I'm not too sure. But uh, coming oh, in on the rails, because she hasn't been on it for a while, Greta Thunberg. Did you ever remember a woman called Greta Thunberg? She used to be... About yay high, yeah. she doesn't shower. She doesn't go to school. Yeah. Um, she's too old for school now. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately for her, she missed out on most of the schooling that she should have had. Uh, she's now... why she hasn't got a job and yeah. she's still winding everybody up. Well, but she came back to Britain. Apparently, she now lives in Dorset, <laughs> you know? Oh, um, God. Britain. So she, apparently she's moved here. She likes How'd it here How'd she get so here? Much. By boat? Now, I don't know how she got here, but I don't think anybody's told her about Dorset. Because if you go down to Dorset, you'll find that parts of it are known as the Jurassic Coast, right? Mm. And if you walk around the beaches of Dorset, you know what you find? Fossils everywhere, okay. all over the place. Quite famous for it. She's been demonstrating this week against fossils and fossil fuels. I really hope so you're I think joking. she's living in the wrong part of the country, to be honest. I really hope you're joking. She, I'm not joking. She lives in Dorset. No, but she's, she's, she's protesting against fossils. But she's protesting against fossil fuels. Well, fossils, fossils. Oh, OK. Oh, so... You see what, oh, I, see what yeah, I did there? Yeah, I see what you did I thought, it was yeah. a, I thought it was a great analogy. Yeah. I still think she needs to I mean, the thing is, and have a watch. She's so ludicrous, I would have actually believed that. Yeah. This well, is the thing. She was arrested this week because there was a protest uh, called Fossil Free London. 
That's what it's called. It's not called fossil fuel free London. It's called fossil free London, right? That and means I'll never work again. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> He's still done it. What are you on <laughs> today, Black Sheep? Some, bum. Yeah, another one. Some, you know, there was, a, there was a big demonstration. It wasn't just Stop Oil. It wasn't Extinction Rebellion. There's a new lot of people in town. Oh, well, and here we are. We can see her getting arrested. She's been put in the back of a paddy wagon, as we used to call them. Not sure if you can call it that anymore. Um, but that's oh, no, that's sorry. That's sorry. disrespectful. She used to call it a Black seems, Mariah. But she, seems like no, sorry. Um, she seems like she's enjoying that. Did she get patted down by, like, Henry Cavill? Oh, well, I don't know. But, um, <laughs> she, she doesn't really look seems that upset, herself. does she? But, I mean, the point is, what is she doing here? She's apparently asking to reclaim the power. Uh, they're, they're hitting out a spineless politicians who are doing nothing about global warming. Um, okay. There's a big storm coming this week, so, I mean, they'll no doubt blame that on uh, the climate change scenario. Uh, but it was outside the Intercontinental Hotel, a place we might know well, I certainly do, down by the bottom end of Park Lane. And, and there was an oil executives meeting going on. You know, min ministers were speaking. And Greta turns up, they're all hitting drums and things like that. It's like, can you not move on and do something yeah. else? Yeah, she's wasting her life. Yeah. She's becoming a total parody of herself now. Yeah. I mean, how old is she? Now. Well, she must be 104. In She's in her 20s. Now. Oh, that know, hat you know would walk on its own. It's been on oh. her head for so long, oh. wouldn't it? Oh, God, Absolutely it must right. have grown some stuck stuff. to her. You know what I think she needs? I think she needs a boyfriend. Candace, we should, we should like team up to try and find her boyfriend. Definitely. No, I, I think she needs to change gender. Then she'll have an even more campaign. Well, about. Greta. Apparently, the yeah. badge <laughs> that she was wearing said the words oily money out. Oily uh, money out. It's not a great slogan. Yeah. That was I the best thing. It sounds like drug dealers. But yeah. I saw her once performing on stage with a young guy and she was dancing and she looked really she happy. She actually looked happy doing that, and yeah. I thought that's what you should be doing. Yeah. yeah. You know? we, we, should, we should get her a date. I, I, really, I really agree what you just said, Candice, because it's almost like some people get to a point where there's nothing else to do but complain about the very latest thing. And yeah. it's like... It seems to me that all the things that people talk about nowadays, they get hijacked, excuse the pun, genuinely, mm. by this mob of... Unwashed, right. disaffected, well, lazy this, I mean, idiots. And of course, well, as you, true, as you would expect, her, just go to work and shut up. And as soon as the mob turned up, yeah. I said to myself, "Oh, it must be half term." And of course, it is. And that's why, because most of these people are either teachers uh, or associated with teaching in some way, or the university. They that's what break. giving people sixteen weeks holiday a year does. I know. Well, I've just been off, and I hated it. You know. I mean, Can I, I just share this with you, dear viewer? Right. This is honestly trying to get him to be off because he wasn't <laughs> great. Right. It's a nightmare every day. I want to come back. Just get better for God's yeah, sake. I know. I know. Absolute nightmare. But Scotland Yard have uh, said that she's now been charged with a public order offence, apparently, um, which is not a big deal, but it's just another offence that she's been charged with. But should we not be able to, Peter, you're an expert in these matters, should we not be able to give Greta some kind of exclusion order and say you're not allowed, like a football supporter who continually gets arrested, mm. can you not say you can't come inside the M25? If they endorse it on the Jurassic Coast. Well, there are Fossil conditions dark. that can be applied to her bail, of course, Yes. between the time that she's charged and when she goes to court, and any sentence that she receives, if it's yeah. a non-custodial one, if, of course, she pleads guilty or is found guilty... We'll have to see. There will be, you know, a, a criminal court hearing of some description. Yeah. Then a judge may seem fit to apply some. To apply. Of. Now, I'm going to show you something which is one of the greatest pieces of video I've ever seen. And we've all seen some great pieces of video. This is a French nun, right, uh -huh. showing us how you should deal with climate protesters. Check this out. This is brilliant. Here we are. She's coming from over there. She comes. She's taking him down. <laughs> I hope she doesn't get in the habit. <laughs> you see, the French, the yeah. French nuns are yeah, the I best think we should ones. see that again. Can we have another look at that? We have it in slow really, motion. They're, they're holding pipes, these people, because apparently it keeps them somehow from being arrested. I don't know Here comes the is. nun. But here she comes. Go look. on, the nun. She's taking Whoa. it right out. Oh. I mean, that wouldn't look out of place in the World Cup. The That's World like Cup. Sister Act on it acid, is. isn't it? It's it's really, it was brilliant. the Holy Spirit. Absolutely fantastic. Very good. So anyway, well done. Whatever the... the, 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 the the order of those nuns is. They're nothing like the ones I had at school. <laughs> they seem to only be obsessed with hitting me over the hands with a ruler. Quite often a steel ruler. That was all they did. Do you want to talk about cruel. it? Very cruel yeah. people. Yeah, they were I, okay. I know what they do. I know no, okay. I'm over it now. <laughs> they um, were really right, therapist. Candice, back to you. Uh, let's talk about weight, oh, shall we? So my nomination this week is Richard Curtis. If people are familiar with him, he directed Four Weddings and a Funeral, yes. Love Actually. He's one of the lovey darlings, isn't he? Yes. Everybody I mean, thinks he's brilliant. I feel a bit bad making him a plank because what he said was just a bit pathetic, if planky. Yes. So he came out this week and said he regrets all of the films that he made where jokes were made about women's weight. And he said he should do better. But why? 
I just for me, I'm just like, why are you giving yourself that much moral weight? Yeah. I mean, they're just romantic comedies. Yeah. For goodness sure. sake, like no one cares. No one's thinking back to that scene in Bridget Jones's diary where she talked about mm. her thunder thighs. Like mm. no one cares, only him. Right. And I just, you know, why do people keep doing this? But it's this kind this? of cleansing of the soul that people go through, isn't it? They go, is oh, after... I did some terrible things. I, I don't. Just, just out of curiosity, is this after the watershed? This. Yeah. Not really. No. Okay, because I was thinking of a word that's another a synonym right. for cat. Um, but I'll, I'll let the viewers... Cat? Go, yeah, synonym yes. for cat. Don't yeah. say it. Oh, yeah. 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 Let's just throw it like... What I... I have this argument with my daughter, who's a student at 20, and, and I'm just going to... This is just my opinion, Same age as right? Greta. Yeah, well, yes, and she does wash my daughter. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know <laughs> I, I just... Here's the thing. I actually don't mind. It's fine. I love the fact this younger generation have an opinion. But till the last breath in my body comes out of my mouth... I am not going to be told by this generation that everything that I was brought up to believe in, laugh at, watch, do, right. open the car for a, a car door for a woman or a, I don't know, watch something that may... You can't apologise for everything. Surely there comes a point where you stop going back and you right. go, OK, the world's changed now. Richard Cuddy, it's just because he's... I guess left wing daughter was doing yeah. some podcast with him. Bridget Jones was hysterical. Yeah. And then he said there were no black people in it. He dis oh, there were the no horror. men. Yeah. And there were no men who dressed right. as women. He did I the mean, Vicar Jesus, it was a good film. Well, he did yes. the Vicar of Dibley as well. And all they did was make jokes about the size of her, wasn't it? I mean, that was the whole point of the show. The, and the I, I he, he seems to assume that if you don't make jokes about it, they just people stop noticing that they are fat people. Right. Like how we pretend like Lizzo is this beautiful, gorgeous woman. OK, you tell your girlfriend, you know what, you're so hot, you look just like Lizzo. And you'll be surprised if, you know, you might get a punch in the mouth. But, well. but, the, but the phrases that they use to replace the word fat are even more insulting. They'll say yeah, things like calling someone enormous. I right. mean, that's far oh, worse obese. being called fat. Yeah, obese. <laughs> it's we've a big got, subject, isn't it? It, it is. It is a, it's expanding. We've, yeah. got a, we've got a clip as well. Here it is. Here's Bridget Jones. Have a look. December 25th. Weight, 140 pounds, plus 42 mince pies. Alcohol units, Oh, thousands. Bugger off! That's what can I just point, say? Under her breath, Esther went, she was never 142 pounds. <laughs> <She> was, <laughs> I'm around... Well, I'm less than 140, but I, she was not 140 Can I ask pounds. two women, because yeah. I had this debate on breakfast and I got yeah, yeah. slaughtered. D D what do you think? You're both like, this is ridiculous, yes. right? But the thing is, it doesn't change anything because people own mirrors. They know when, like, uh, trust me, a fat person knows they're fat. But also, it's not news to them. The Thank you, that, I do. But <laughs> things are of their time. Like, we were watching 101 Dalmatians with my kids the other day. Right. That's from 1961. And that scene where Cruella de Vil is driving yes. and someone shouts, You're supposed Cray! to prepare them, aren't you, for the trauma yes. of the, of yeah. the, of and the dogs. And they say, they say, crazy woman driver. And right. they never say that now. But and she didn't have a seatbelt on. I mean, I think we need that is shocking. She didn't that have really a seatbelt on. She had a fag in her hand and yeah. a mobile phone to her. It's a nightmare. Yeah. I made that nine points, madam. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely right. What about the dogs in the back? Yeah. Have you got a licence for them? No, sorry. <laughs> that's another two years in jail. I mean, it is ridiculous. Yeah. But, I mean, it's this is kind of self-flagellation that is. particularly these lefty people in the entertainment business seem to like to go through. You know, same with Little Britain, all going, oh, yeah, let's get rid of it. We just pretend we never made that stuff. It was really funny. Some of it was in bad taste, so what? But it's also, it's they're not that important, you know? I there's mean, a... these aren't politicians. They're just people who make comedy. Yeah. You know, and, and mine's different, though. I think there's a lot, right, without getting... There's a lot of stuff that was made in the past that isn't socially acceptable now. But yeah. if you try and cleanse everything that went by... All I ever say to people is, right... Have your opinion, but please allow us, me, us, to have ours. To you have can't ours, yeah. change the whole goddamn world because you apparently, at 20 or whatever Greta is, you think you've got all the answers. Yeah. I'm not going to be told, this is my daughter quite forced me, I'm not going to be told that what your grandparents taught me was wrong. You can yeah. do one. Well, it's like Prince Harry, isn't it? People say you can never get Prince Harry into every episode. I can, because I'm just about to mention it. <laughs> Prince Harry <laughs> is the one that's going around telling us, oh, you shouldn't be racist. The world's full of racists. Well, I'm not the guy that dressed up as a Nazi and went to a party, uh, which is pretty offensive to Jewish people. And I'm also not the guy that called uh, a fellow um, officer at, San at Sandringham the P word. So I don't need to apologise for being a racist. Thanks. Harry, uh, but you can apologise and you can carry on do whatever the hell you like. Anyway, that's my speech off the thing. Brilliant. Uh, Peter Plexley, what have you got for us? The police. Oh, oh hold on, hold on. Has he Something having a moment? set in. What's the matter, Pete? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was having a delayed response time. OK, is that right. what you're allowed to do? Because this is <laughs> this is the Metropolitan Police, By right? the way, before we carry on, can we just mention, give a plug to your new show? What's it called? Crime Suspects. Crime Suspects, really? great name. 
What's that on? Thank you. It's produced by Talk TV yeah. and it's hosted on YouTube. And it's a YouTube show uh, in, in which Peter uh, talks to ex kind of um, investigators and people about specific stories. When does that people, start? It's a we, true we, crime thing. We've just started the second series, Jeremy, but it's fine. You catch up when you want. There, the episodes are about twenty-five minutes long on YouTube. You can find this them. This is all not quite allowed easily. on YouTube. I'm not allowed on it's YouTube. Not allowed I get on arrested. YouTube. We have <laughs> is she really we have <laughs> incredible guests. We discuss very important crime and policing topics, and it's a can show. Can I get on. it on catch up? It very sounds fabulous. fabulous. What's yeah. YouTube? Is it go yeah. on to YouTube. I just think that was yeah, That's enough can of I... a plug. Yeah. I didn't Thank want you. to go on forever. But, yeah, <laughs> if you mind getting on with the st with the Thank actual you. show, please. Right. So the Metropolitan Police used to have fairly lamentable response times of an hour to a 999 call. So this is not a 999 call where somebody is in the process of being stabbed to death. Mm. Um, so not an immediate response is required, but it's the sort of thing if you've been robbed of your phone, for example, or something like that. How are you going to call 999 if you've been robbed of your phone? Yeah, well, you use a telephone box, don't you? Eh? Oh, no. No, oh, no, none there's none of them. No. None of those. They've oh, been somebody, vandalised. You know, you go up and say, excuse me, can I use your phone? They go, having a laugh. Yeah. No. Yeah. You're stuck, aren't you? You are indeed. Yeah. So go and go, go into anyway, the shop. Go find a police station. Oh, no, there aren't any of those either. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. no, no. <laughs> Just go and buy a new phone, Peter. I think that's what you should do. Yeah, yeah. Well, in the unfortunate event <laughs> that you have your bicycle <laughs> stolen... There you go. ..but you've still got your phone... Yeah. ..and you ring 999 yeah. to report the theft yeah. of your bike, um, the Met Police were attending in around about an hour or so. Oh, yeah. That was in 2018. Yeah. Now it takes them two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> So, you know, that's quite some dramatic kind of... Uh, Is that because they're on bikes now rather than in cars? No, they're so not I've on seen bikes, some they're in bike. cars. Yeah. They're in cars, I think. They're very, very busy. Right. And uh, they promise that they're going to get better. Good. And they're going to give us a greater service. Brilliant. But these stats released this week wouldn't seem to no. support that. This is the same Metropolitan Police who are going to investigate every single crime now, right? Isn't that what we were told a few months in ago? In their dreams. Every single crime. Yes, yes. I mean, pronouns, which is, everything. Which is never going to happen, of course. Are they really? sure about this, all no. of them? Well, their commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley, has been fairly vocal and about needing to improve the organisation, and, of course, we all know that is very much the case. Um, but as for their attending or investigating every crime, it just ain't going to happen. Policing is in crisis. There's some good cops but there's some bone-idle, lazy, useless ones out there <laughs> who don't actually arrest people no. because they don't want to do the paperwork. I mean, could it not be better if they set a, a, a slightly lower bar? You know, instead of saying we're going to investigate every crime, how yeah. about you investigate, like, just, just one a or few, two? Some, just a any, few, yeah. any crime any at all. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. Make build, a few Can I just say it's a great nomination, but what was that show again? Yeah, was it did? called? <laughs> yeah. That's enough of that rubbish. Let's good. have some yeah. music to drown it all out. We can't have any more plugs on this show. That's enough. Apart from, obviously, for the new breakfast show that Jeremy's doing. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, coming up, though, uh, we're going to talk about a bloke who's a woman who won uh, an award for not being a bloke. And also, um, another police officer who thinks he was in the fault of the dance. It turns out he wasn't there. He wasn't he born. He forgot. <laughs> you know, it's easily done. Uh, this is Plank of the Week. Back with more after this. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. It is your Friday night here on Talk TV. And, of course, there's lots more going on throughout the course of the weekend. Uh, we'll tell you more about that coming up. Right now, though, time to go to Esther Kreku for her second nomination. Esther, what have you got for Yes, this? so my second nomination is Dylan Mulvaney. Oh, yeah. Um, for winning uh, for winning and accepting the awards from Virgin Atlantic Attitude Awards yes. for Women of the Year. Right. Now, in his defence, they, they at least waited for him to be a woman for a year. Um, unlike Bruce Jenner, or now Caitlyn Jenner, who was awarded Woman of the Year, and he hadn't even been a woman for the entirety of the year. Ah. Uh, so, but the, the thing is, he's 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 a massive troll. Like he's absolutely just yeah. cosplaying as a woman. Right. And the fact that people are buying into this and saying, "Oh, actually, yes, he's a woman because he put, he uses tampons and puts them God knows where." <laughs> And oh, wears dresses God. and shaves everything. Oh dear. And it's God. just this flamboyant kind of caricature of what some. But he's shaving some things that women be. don't have. Presumably. Well, but this is the thing because I, Candice, when was the last time you shaved your chest? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a personal question. I mean, I can. 
tell you the last time How I shaved you? my chest, never. Really? Um, but I have things in the way. Uh, unfortunately, Dylan really? Mulvaney doesn't have that problem. Yeah. Also, why didn't he change also, his name? Also, once you start shaving, it just gets scratchy. So exactly. I wouldn't well, really. you, you wouldn't know. But yeah. anyway, um, I don't know why he didn't change his name either, because it's so weird calling Dylan Mulvaney. It's like, it's, it should be like Delena or something. Like, at least Bruce had the decency to so, go by so, Kate. Sorry, sorry. That whole Can, thing is surreal. Isn't Dylan like one of those sort of um, names that can you be either the guy in the adverts for Virgin. Uh, actually, well, no, I think, that's, I think you're thinking of Kevin um, Bacon. And it's not the one on Strictly. This is somebody else. No, I'm no, no. Well it's an American young influencer. He used to be an actor. Right. We'll show so you the, we can show you the clip. Yeah, well, exactly. he's becoming a woman is, or he is a woman. Well, I think woman, he's for becoming one. Days I'm not now. sure. Don't but he, anyway, he's, he's just one woman of the year. He must be a woman. Have a look. Hello, London! <laughs> I am so honoured to be here with you all tonight. And... You know, some see me as the woman of the year, some see me as a woman of a year and some change, as I only publicly came out online 560 days ago. Women that I know have become very, very um, irritated by Dylan Mulvaney because Dylan Mulvaney, as you say, is a kind of parody woman. You know, she was the one who um, lost yeah. Bud Light millions and millions of dollars because she was the Bud Light, you know, spokeswoman. And she did an advert for Bud Light. American beer, which all the guys were like, we're not, we're not buying this. And then she did a Nike ad, I think, yeah. where she was doing this ludicrous kind of with, with pretend, bra, pretend with no workout, boobs. pretend workout with yeah. sports bra, no boobs, looking like somebody making fun of a woman yeah. working out, yeah. right? And I mean, yeah. every woman I know has said that to me. So I don't know who these people are cheering in the crowd. You know, this kind of Londonista types, you know, who all think everything that isn't actually what it is. Is, is but it's wonderful. like a running joke, and the thing is, they're it's they're ridiculous. they're not they're not in on it. I mean, that Nike ad was hilarious because he looked like my nephew. Yeah. No boobs, straight A line yeah. body shape. I mean, it was it was it was hilarious. I see this person, I just think this is the best. But it was sort of pitiable, of my life. Wasn't it? But what is this award? What is the Virgin Atlantic Attitude Award? Well, Attitude I've never even used heard to be a gay them. magazine that was only interested in gay issues, and now actually ah. a lot of women who happen to be gay are also against it because they're saying, hang on, she's not a lesbian, she's not a proper a woman, she's not a member of the gay community. What the hell is she? I'm not really familiar with her. Has she had any babies? Uh, I don't believe so. Um, assuming someone's derriere can get pregnant. What? Uh, <laughs> until I'm, that I'm happens. That's sort of talk. <laughs> until that yeah, happens. It's not no. even nine o'clock yet, for heaven's sake. Yeah. Yeah, All Jeremy, right. um, maybe can't. we should move on to... Uh, I just can't. I just... <laughs> maybe honestly. we should move on, Jeremy, to your next nomination. Yes. Uh, the man who... Wow. Um, the man who would be... This is brilliant. This is Nick veteran. Alderley. And I did, we were talking about... Nick what, Adderley. Adderley, Alderley, yes. whatever. He's Adderley. on the edge. He's on the edge. <laughs> I see did there. I got that. I got, you see? Uh, Nick Adderley, uh, Northampton's uh, police chief, has been suspended because um, it turns out um, that he, he wore lots of uh, array of medals when he was standing at these commemorative yeah. things. And one of them was the Falkland Islands which obviously was a, a major part of our history. Um, he was accused of wearing it at several events. It turned out that he never won it. He'd obviously nicked it or taken it because he was 15 when the Falkland Islands oh. carried on. Dear but it was, his, it was his disappointment. It was his comment when it happened, Nick Adderley. Uh, he expressed disappointment <laughs> at what he said were leaked details <laughs> of a very personal family issue. So you've got a tea leaf in your family, you're a blatant liar, mate. Right. I mean, the, the, the truth... Is, and this was the police chief of... Yes. Not, you know, when we talk, Pete, about you know, trust in the police. This one's a tea leaf and a liar. Right. And he's been suspended. And right. why did he think that nobody would notice? Because, I mean, if you Unbelievable. Wear, I don't have any medals, personally. I mean, I don't ch tend to... I think you, you know, should, though. Well, maybe Services I should. Services to broadcast. Maybe I should get one. But, I mean, I don't currently have any, but I don't know what people's obsession is with wearing all these medals. And particularly if you're in the police. I mean, you know... Why are you wearing, what, what are they all? Right, so, so it, they're, they're, what do you get it, medals for? You right. haven't well, got any, have you? You haven't got any. He had five medals, right. okay, which he wore on the left side of his chest. One for the First World War. One was. One for the Second World War. <laughs> one for the Fourth. Crimean War. The Crimean War. Crimean, Crimean, you know, <laughs> and the Cold War. Battle of Ajin Kul. That one. <laughs> one. I was there. <laughs> Russian Civil War, come on, yeah. let's be honest, in 1840. Yeah. Yeah. The fall of Stalingrad. <laughs> the, you know. the Boer War, he was there, wasn't he? <laughs> I mean, it is ridiculous, but that's what he's done, though. Right, right. So War of the Roses, his... it's all going on. What was his police <laughs> long service and good conduct medal, which you get after 22 years? That's going to be taken away. You'd have to give that back. You'd have to give that back, liar. And, and the other it's two... It's three now. Yeah. And the other two were Jubilee medals. They're basically turning up medals, right, you know okay. what I mean? You get them on... They got them on got the Queen's them? Jubilees and all that sort of stuff. No, I haven't got a medal in my name. What I have got is my old dad's medals, who's no longer and with me. us. And, and I can wear those yeah. if I want, right. but you wear them on the on right, the right hand side. side. Okay, right. And just about anybody who's ever contemplated wearing a medal or being in the military yeah. knows that. Right. It's widely known. 
If they're not yours, wear them on the right. Mm. He's got two medals. One apparently, which was from his brother's service and given to him. But instead of wearing that and the other one on the right... Is that the Falklands one? Was his he, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. He wore them on the left. Right. Okay. Now, Nick Adderley is a very much respected and well-liked police officer. He was. Among, among many police officers. <laughs> was. But he's made a proper, proper yeah. Charlie of himself here. He really here. has. And well, yeah, there's an got, investigation. We, we, That's not his got a, pronoun, Charlie. We've got, we got a clip yeah. of uh, our boy Charlie Shall Adderley. Um, here he is talking about locking up criminals. Here in Tameside, I'm giving criminals the opportunity to clear the slate, to spend time with their family and loved ones over the Christmas period. So if you want to do that, come in and get the matter dealt with now. If you don't, come and join me in one of these. He had the pips on the wrong shoulder. That's right, he had that. <laughs> oh, Honestly, so they weren't though. his pips, they his brothers, obviously. Yeah, obviously, yeah. I think he's taken the pip. But, it, mean, the, but yeah. the bottom line is, I mean, that's a ch that's somebody that's quite senior. That's ludicrous, man. Chief Constable of Northamptonshire. Yeah. The top cop in that county. Is a liar. There were plenty of pictures of him wearing these medals. And I think there has been times when he's alluded or certainly heavily hinted towards some degree of service in the Falklands. Yeah, well, none of us... In the Falklands a... conflict. No, in the Falklands conflict. Exactly. Not, you can't just get a medal for going there. You know, like if you went there... To, I think it's out, such a long way, check instead out, of a barren place, check you should out, get a medal if you go to the check Falklands. Check out Goose Green. I took me three hours to get through JFK once, so I should have a medal for that. But that was in New York. Don't suppose they count that, do they? Anyway, no. never mind. Coming up, uh, one of our old friends is back. Do you remember that bloke that beat a fox to death with a baseball bat? He's back, uh, and he's going to be coming up next on Plank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We're getting near the final furlong where I get to choose who is going to be the winner. Uh, but also, I will be thanking uh, all of my fantastic members of the panel today. And I should say that Jeremy Carl, uh, very kindly offering to do this show, even though uh, he's got this big new show, uh, which is called Talk Today, uh, every single morning right here on uh, Talk TV. You want to give us a little plug? 6am, Monday to Thursday, with me and Ms Thorpe. And, uh, yeah, listen, we're just... It's a new breakfast show. Give it, give it a watch. Give it a listen. I, um... I'm out of bed every morning at two o'clock. Listen, yeah. we're having a good time. Listen, at the moment, there's loads of news, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, of course. Crazy. It's unbelievable. Uh, also, coming up uh, later on, uh, if you decide you want to pop out for a pint after this, or three, or ten, uh, always drink responsibly, obviously, but at 11.30, <laughs> you have a chance to see the world according to Mike Graham. Uh, and it's a great old world, I have to say. Um, while we're on it, um, Jolian Maugham, or oh. as I like to call him, Jolian Moron, um, <laughs> is back in the news. Uh, this is a man uh, who is most famous, probably, uh, for Boxing Day a couple of years ago, uh, tweeting out that he had just beaten a fox to death uh, while wearing his wife's kimono. Now, until that why moment... Why would you do that? Well, I mean, yeah, no. why would you send the tweet? Or well, wear why, a well one, why would you beat the fox to death with beat a baseball the bat? Yes. He you says it was to protect now. his chickens. Um, also, why would you then be wearing your wife's kimono unless you... Why does his have a wife have a kimono? Well, why does his wife have a kimono? How why does he, he have, have a wife, wife if he's exactly. such a moron? <laughs> there is that. Um, all of those things. Plus, why would you then actually tweet out that you'd done it? Yeah. <laughs> It massively backfired on him because he was the sort of Ramona's Ramona. This is a guy who keeps taking the government to court, uh, mm. keeps spending more and more taxpayers' money, making sure that we uh, try and keep them uh, honest in government. Unfortunately, he hasn't won a case yet, right? He runs something called the Good Law Project, and lots of idiots give him money. Loads of them, right? He's got millions and millions of pounds in his kind of uh, war chest, as it, as it were. Um, and he's made an announcement this week to say that he's back out there fighting the good fight. Have a look at this. Nobody should consider themselves above the law. However well connected they are, we need these stories brought to light. Um, we're very, very grateful to those of you who've been able to support us hitherto, uh, and we're very, very grateful if anyone feels able to support this really critically important work going forward. Is he, is, he, is he in the lounge of an old people's home? I don't know where he and is. And what does he stand for? Because I've got no idea well, what that means. He what does he stand for? Well, he stands, he says, uh, for uh, being against corruption. Uh, he's taken several lawsuits out against the government trying to stop Brexit. He's taken several lawsuits out against the government. Oh, get a job and have a shower. All manner Jesus. of things. Go what, he's, what he's landed on is, is a sort of a way of, of making a business out of, you know, getting people to support it. He's basically now hired two journalists, he says, to go through all of this previously unpublished paperwork about the PPE. Everybody knows the PPE was a scandal mm. and everybody knows that the government wasted a load of money. But he's going to now waste more government money, which is basically our money, by suing them even more through the courts and continually losing. And he's but actually every... called Jolly On, isn't he? Jolly On, yes. What a ridiculous name. It is a ridiculous <laughs> name. And also, anybody who says <laughs> hitherto, in my view, uh, should be treated with scant regard. I mean, who says hitherto? 
Hit the two. I have such a problem, though, with people donating to these legal causes. Yeah. People mm. with no legal background no. whatsoever. They have no idea how successful the case no. is going to be. It's more they virtue how... signalling. Yes. And all they do is they clog up the courts. Mm. Like I say, he never, he's never successful and is, is always dismissed by every judge he goes ahead, he goes yeah. before, who says, you know, this is basically a frivolous case. It's a waste mm. of everybody's time. Get lost. Yeah. Well, hither... Green is the first stop on my train home. Oh, hit the two. Yeah. Where does it, which depends the direction you're going in. Hit the green, yeah. Mm. I just think Julian Moron um, should stay out of the way, basically, because, I mean, he's got a very irritating voice, it seems to me. He does, and bless him. He, he's, he's kind of, you know... And an unfortunate name. A and very an unfortunate, unfortunate head name. shape. Yeah, but he is... I think he should of, be in Thunderbird. But he is the kind of figurehead of this group of people in this country <laughs> who think that you can solve everything in a courtroom. Which, of course, you can't. Just go to no. work. And, and particularly pol political issues. Political yeah. issues are decided at the ballot box yeah. or in government. Right. They're not decided in the bleeding courtroom with public money being wasted on them, as Absolutely far as I'm concerned. Absolutely not. Yeah, and they've got some yeah, yeah. trust Thank you. the public. Hitherto, I agree well. with you. Yes. <laughs> Hitherto, I say to you... Yes. I mean, this is the way these people talk. You go, what's wrong with you? He needs <laughs> to <laughs> look at his wallpaper. It was crap. He needs to work he on He needs to spend more yeah, time worrying windmill. about his wallpaper. He lives in a windmill, apparently. Does he? Don't mention Don Quixote to him. Oh, yes. I know that's a bit of a reference for the teenagers. Um, but, yeah, um, I'm going to have to start thinking about the winner because uh, there have been some great nominations. We're getting near to that point, and I'm just going to quickly go back well, clearly the them. man winning a Woman of the Year award is a... Is a well, I think a man think winning, winning a Woman of the Year award the is winner. pretty plankish, but I think, I have to say, um, my favourite today has got to be... Um, the one that Jeremy suggested, <laughs> Hannah Ingram. It Ball. is her. Yeah, it has got to be yeah. Hannah Ingram. It has Ball. to be her. Because she is think? the woman at the figurehead of this organisation, Captain Tom's Foundation, uh, which everybody thought was brilliant, uh, which everybody gave money to, and which it now turns out uh, has been brutally used uh, for some private, uh, sort of, shall we say, spending that shouldn't have been going on. A so spa. Congratulations Thank to you, you, my friend. Jeremy Carl. Congratulations to Hannah Ingram Moore. You have won. This week's Plank of the Week. And I'm delighted to be able to give it to you in person because uh, they said I would never be back. But I am back. I'm so glad um, you're back. You're a legend, Thank you very much mate. indeed. Thank and you. I will be back on Monday, as usual, um, at 9.30am, uh, alongside Jeremy Carl uh, and his new breakfast show. Uh, I'll also be on later on tonight, 11.30. Uh, don't miss the world according to Mike Graham. Nadine Doris is coming next. Thank you very much to Candice. Thank you very much to Peter Blexley, who was brilliant today, absolutely amazing. Yeah, Esther Kraku as well. Uh, and Jeremy Carl, what can I say? Thank you so much to all of you. Pleasure, Have mate. a lovely Thanks Friday afternoon, uh, lovely back. Friday evening. Uh, we'll see you next time. This is Plank of the Week. <laughs>